Hey guys, so I realized that I haven't really uploaded a lot of videos recently, and um, the, the reason for that is school, basically. Um, I go to boarding school, and it takes up 110% of my time, to be completely honest. Um, I, I have dropped out of a lot of the hobbies I used to do, and activities I used to be part of, because of schoolwork and keeping up with grades and things like that. However, as summer's coming around the corner, I will have some more time to get back into working on projects that I have. So, I would like to let you guys know what I have in mind and what you can expect for videos to come. Um, as you can see on my tech bench, I kind of gave you an example of some of the things I'll be working on. My scar is being transformed yet again. It, um, when I changed it from an SSG to a DMR, I kind of stopped using it for a while because winter had hit, so I wasn't playing outdoors at all. And I realized how much I missed it, so I'm changing it back from a DMR to what will be actually a field DSG. I'm trying to test myself with this build because I could build a more sufficient and more efficient field gun using, for example, a 14 to 1 or 10 to 1 SSG gear set. I realize that. However, I want to test myself and I want to see where the limits are for the performance of a DSG really so this build will be extremely experimental parts might change in this often and it will really just be for my own personal testing to see what I can do um, this gun will have a the barrel assembly should come out to about here actually it's gonna be really short from my 416 it's just a 6.08 brass polished barrel with a, it'll have the stock scar clear chamber and an R hop installed. Um, I might actually be buying a custom CNC machined Scar H, Classic Army, not Scar H, sorry, Classic Army Scar L hop up chamber that also has an STS like buffer on it. Um, I say possibly because I don't feel that I need it. I feel that it's only going to create alignment problems with feeding and with FPS. However, it would be awesome to have the STS in this gun because I'll be running a 10 to 1 9 tooth DSG with a, an M190 spring. I will either use a Promi M190 or a Garter SP190. I will be running this on my JG Blue motor and probably just my regular 11 more lipo. Um, that's the gist of the build. I mean, those are all the main parts that actually conduct performance. The other parts will just be for durability. Um, so I don't really feel the need to get into them now. I will get into them in a later video when I really do it in depth on the build. So over here, you can see an SR25 upper. This is a new gun I acquired. I did not previously have this. And because the SCAR is stepping down from the role of DMR, something had to take its place. So if you haven't already noticed it, actually, there's a little peculiar piece sticking out of the upper receiver. And that is the beginning of a TDC mod. If you don't know what a TDC mod is, um, very basically, I'm replacing the hop-up wheel, so this is the hop-up, it has a custom ER hop in it, um, Zardshar Airsoft, or my friend Charlie Yu, he cut my barrel for me as I do not have the proper tools to cut it reliably, and he sized the patch for me, um, I had another friend um, the 3D print me this hop-up arm, and I got a whole set of them over there for testing, and I use an eraser nub because I have an M nub, but I do not like how soft they are. I actually really don't like how soft they are. And if they don't fit your chamber perfectly, they will um, squish and become uneven. And I just, I'm just i just testing new materials, basically. But to the TDC mod. So what this does is the screw, as you can probably tell, I, I drilled a hole on the top of this receiver. Just a Dremel and a drill bit. Um, not much. You don't really need a drill press or anything as long as you have a steady hand. Um, I widened it for the bolt, I secured the bolt in place, I used super glue, I will probably redo this with JB welds when I have it all tuned and set, however, for right now, in case I wanted to change it up again, I just used super glue. Um, but what it does is this, uh, I will screw the screw farther down, and it will contact the top of this hop-up arm, and the screw will actually be what applies the hop in my hop-up setup, rather than this wheel. The reason why I'm doing this is because... On a DMR, I will be using 0.362.43 gram BBs. And I say that not meaning I will be switching between those. I say that meaning I will do some testing with my specific FPS and my specific hop setup 
and whichever BB gives me the longest flat trajectory range, I will just be using that exclusively. Also, I want to make sure there's a brand that makes the BBs reliably and not with terrible quality control. So, that being said, I will have exclusively one brand of BB, one gram of BB, and one FPS from the gun. Nothing will change, so the hop-up will never actually change on this gun. I'll just be going for straight flat trajectory, and I'll be dialing my scope for that. So the screw, once I screw it down to the proper height, it will give me that hop for that straight flat trajectory, and it will not move, and it will say consistent hop, as opposed to the wheel on the hop-up accidentally unwinding itself, for example, or being hit and coming undone. So it's just a more consistent way to apply hop than traditional methods. And I'm trying it out because I've never done one before, so I figured I might as well. Um, more things you can see, a lot of batteries in the back. I'm finishing up a customer build, actually. Um, all these batteries I'm going to wire to Dean's or my friend. Um, hop up, same customer build. I flat hopped it and I modified it to fit the Mad Bull... Um, what are they? They're the, the Mad Bull Outer Barrels. Um, I'm forgetting what copy it is. I'm sorry, I'll probably annotate it in the video later. Um, oh, the Daniel Defense Outer Barrels, that's what they are. Um, upcoming projects, SCAR, SR25, the 416. The 416 will be changing as well. It will stay the field rifle it currently is, however, the internals will be swapped for it. It will turn into a jewel creep build, another experimental build where I might change parts a lot, really for my own personal testing and my own fun, just to see what happens. Um, I will be swapping the barrel assembly out for the one that's in the DSG right now, which is a polished 6.08, Lonex 70D bucking, and a Lonex chamber. Um, not much else is going to change in that build other than the piston assembly and the cylinder. I'm going to put a, a full cylinder in, shorter barrel, heavy Lonex red with an aluminum piston. And we're going to see how that goes. We're going to experiment with different piston weights, different BB weights, and things like that. Um, the DSG. The DSG is going over, is undergoing an external change. I will be completely changing all the externals on the DSG. So that will be fun to witness. I will also be changing the gear set. So the DSG now has a 10 to 1, 8 tooth DSG gear set. I will be buying a 14 to 1, 9 tooth DSG gear set. I will be putting the 10 to 1 gears from the DSG with the 9 tooth sector gear from the set I buy into the SCAR. And then the 14 to 1 DSG set with the 8 tooth DSG itself will be going into the... Um, current DSG and I'll also be swapping the motor out for a JG red motor. The reason why I'm doing this is because my RPS should sit around the 63 mark in that gun and then in the SCAR it will be around the 50 mark and that's just the best way I can kind of change around the parts I already have to get the performance I want. Other than that the DSG is staying the same nothing else is going to change internally. Um, the SR25 will be getting one of my 28 TPA A and K high torque motors. Um, this will have the JG blue, DSG will have the JG red, the 416 will still have the Lone XA1. And then, if you can kind of see, I still have some Wolverine SMP stuff in the background. I will be converting the 416 or the DSG, haven't decided yet, I'll be converting one of those gearboxes to be able to accept the Wolverine SMP because you have to, or I had to modify my gearbox shell a little bit to make it fit. I will also be modifying the ANK ACR shell that the SMP is currently in to get better fitment and try to reuse the legitimate ACR nozzle because this, so this says SCAR H on it. This is actually the ANK ACR nozzle. I had to buy a SCAR H nozzle because it's longer and shave it down myself to the right length because the ANK ACR nozzle was too short for the actual ANK ACR. Now the reason for this is because the gearbox actually held the whole unit slightly farther back than it should have, I think two millimeters farther back, which created an air gap. So I needed to compensate for that by buying a longer nozzle. However, a side project for me is going to be revisiting that and actually fixing the gearbox alignment and the actual issue and not just kind of overcompensating with the nozzle. I think I hit everything. The only other thing I want to touch on is that I am going to a local op in the next two weeks. Um, 
Spring Offensive 7 at UVG. Uh, I will only be there for May 30th. I will not be there 31st, regrettably. However, it should be fun. It'll be my first, I think, legitimate op. I've done a lot of small ones up at RPC in New Hampshire, but nothing at UVG yet. So it'll be interesting to figure out. Um, I plan to run my ACR until my HPA tank runs low. Then I will have the 416 and the DSG as backups, as I do not foresee either of these two guns on my bench being finished. Um, so that's it. This video is a lot longer than I intended it to be. However, this is just a little update for things to come. So again, sorry I haven't posted recently. Um, I will. I plan on posting in the summer, and I plan on posting in the next week or so a little gear update because I got a lot of new gear coming in the mail. So I'm hoping it comes soon enough where I can post a review on it. All right, guys. I will see you later.